yeah, we'll talk about Dad's race because that was incredible, man. That that was uh, pretty cool when I saw that you won it. Um, f- yeah, first off, I don't know how you kept your composure it, it, of all things, but uh, tell us the story about how that all came about because I remember your dad. Your dad was super nice guy. He was always very welcoming to me at the, at the racetrack. Always trying to offer you food that he was cooking always, at the trailer. Right, yeah, always, yeah, come on <laughs> in, Greg, get yourself something to eat. He'd have it all lined up and eat, eat this, that. I mean, super nice guy and he called me and thought enough of me that wanted to do some sort of business with me when your nascar career was taking off so yeah. i always admired him for that and yeah. uh, i always had great conversations with him but um i uh, uh i am sorry that he passed yeah really. i uh i know what it's like to lose a parent i lost my mom a little over a year ago so i remember that yeah man i think the only ones that understand the gravity of losing a parent are the ones who have lost one bingo because it feels like first off it feels like somebody comes along and cuts a big chunk out of you absolutely and that's one and then you also feel like you lose your guide in life you know completely so yeah, yeah there's that and there's a lot of times where I just sit back and I talk to my mom. I'm like, come on, mom, how do I do this? How do I do that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're looking for that guidance that they always provided with you. Or even even maybe not guidance, just that comfort zone, that safety net of like, hey, I'm feeling this way. Is this normal? And they're like, yeah, or no, grow up, whatever. You know, it's um, I understand that completely. Yeah. How, um, how did that memorial race go for you and uh, the your dad and that whole story? Uh Man, it this is a this is a weird one because uh, I finished, so I'm I'm on the door of my first sprint car win the whole season. We're second, third, second, 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 third, and I finished second. I guess I think it was three weeks in a row, and I'm like, I finally look at my crew chief Chase. I'm like, dude, I don't know what else I'm gonna have to do. I literally don't know what I'm gonna do. So the week of before my dad's memorial race, I'm starting uh, 18th. And I made it all the way to second. And I made a last lap slide job that did not work out. And uh, on the last turn, last lap, could have won my first race then. And hindsight's twenty twenty, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, so going to the next week, I'm just frustrated. I'm like, I'm more determined than ever. And I did probably the worst thing I could have done, which was hype up my dad's race. I've got over five to 600 fans that have come to watch and be supportive of my dad's race at Bridgeport. Mm-hmm. So I hosted a fan meetup at intermission and they parked me behind the grandstands and there's a line from literally my trailer into the grandstands all the way to the other end. And I was like, when I did this, I'm like, I'm gonna give out free t-shirts to all my fans who come. If they're in line to get an autograph, they're getting a free t-shirt. Now this cost me like $6,000 or whatever. I mean, wow. it was like a lot of money, but my thing is, hey, you showed appreciation to coming out to my dad's race. I'm showing you appreciation for supporting me and my YouTube journey. It means a lot. That and also all those people walking around with CJ Faison t-shirts and your sponsors are on it. And it's just, it's the ex- exposure. It's exposure. And mm-hmm. also having all of those people there was the biggest pressure I've ever felt in my life. I mean, I could have made a diamond in the trailer from all the pressure that was going on. And uh, <laughs> man, I, I'll tell you right before the fan meetup. Um, so here it is, the heat race. I didn't transfer into the redraw. Oh no. So where am I starting? I'm starting 15th. And then doesn't that suck too? Cause it's like, man, I got everyone here watching me and I don't want to make a fool of myself. Right. I'm starting 15th. I know. But in my head, I'm like, well, last week I went from 18th to second. This week I should be able to win. And I came in the trailer and I, I told my crew chief, I'm like, I'm sorry, I screwed up. Just tighten the car up for me. I'm gonna drive the absolute bat hell out of this thing. He said, all right. And I said, take two right rears into the infield cause I'm gonna at least use up one if I bang it off the wall. <laughs> and um, he did. But uh, long story short, I'm in the trailer right before this fan meet up and um, 100 different emotions going on in my head. Uh, there was some other stuff. There was like some side drama that was going on that was distracting me at that point. And I'm just like, man, can I just like get through this race? So uh, I did the fan meetup, stressful. As soon as I got done with like the last person, I needed to get to the grid immediately. I had no time. I hugged my family and all that, got in the car. And I didn't know what uh, was planned. So we, we all push off. I'm back there in 15th. And they call me all the way to the front of the pack. And they're like, CJ, come to the very front of the pack. Um, you're gonna pace one lap for your dad. 
And I, dude, I, I, I'm man enough to admit it, I was bawling my eyes out. Yeah. Oh, one lap dedicated to my dad. Everyone behind me is on a four wide salute. It was, it was the coolest thing ever. It gives me chills till this day. And um, at that point, I'm like, I could hear him in my, in the back of my head. You know, don't be a you know what man up and and go win this race. I'm like, all right. So, I open my visor, dried up my tears, and I'm like, all right, it's time to go to work. And um, we only, they had one caution, the whole race. So everyone strung out, and all I'm doing is just trying to chase the leader. And, and begging for a caution to bunch everyone back I was, up. I was begging for cautions. If it would have been the NASCAR days, I'd have been throwing water bottles out the window or something. Like I mean, it, anything to get a caution. Um, but yeah, man, uh, it came down to uh, uh, late race, um, late race move. We were it was all dicey. Me first, second, and third. I threw a slider on second, executed that. The guy in front of me was quick. I mean, he was real quick. And I knew that I was going to really have to make a move. And, and I did. I drove the car harder and harder and harder. And by the end of the race, um, you know, right there with uh, we were coming to the white flag when I passed him. So I led the whole white flag lap. And I will tell you like this, you know, everybody's like, oh, it was the longest lap of my life. No, screw you. It was the longest four corners ever. It felt like an hour. Mm -hmm. And um, the whole time I'm like 100 miles an hour the guy behind me is breathing down my neck and um yeah we pulled away i came across the finish line and uh the weirdest feeling ever it was the first moment where i actually started to heal from you know the passing of my dad because before then i just keep myself busy i don't think about it i think about him or you know i talk to him in the truck every once in a while just kind of looking up at the sky but other than that i don't talk about it don't think about it i just go to work and keep myself so busy that i wouldn't have to deal with it and this was like the first step of starting to deal with it for me. Healing. Yeah. That's that's really cool. Um, riding around the track under that cool down lap, you you got to be thinking to yourself, did that just really happen? Did not feel real. Right? Did not feel. As soon as I crossed the, the as soon as I took the checkered flag, it went from slow motion to back to reality. You're like, whoa. All right, this just happened. And then the emotion sets in. And... Um, Family's Just there. Family's there. Friends are there. Everyone who's watching, all of your friends, all the thousands, fans. Thousands of people in the stands. Wow. They're cheering, going nuts. Uh, it was the most surreal moment of my life. And, you know, I, I always wanted to win Dover because I was so close four times. Mm -hmm. But that one there, that takes the cake. That made up for not winning Dover. 